this video today goes out to all the people that I have ever worked with or been around or had very, very intellectual conversations about um, emotional management and brain function in that, um, who may have come with a little bit of skepticism on their part uh, in what I share or talk about. And I love these debates because Debates are often healthy, they're not arguments, <laughs> they are not, um, generally they're not with the purpose of proving oneself to be right and proving the other person wrong, um, in my definition of what healthy debates should be. Um, they are, they should be, it, for me, I feel like they should be uh, an opening to learning something new and um, to then discerning this new information that you take, that you take in. You don't have to take it on board as absolute truth, but it's, I, I enjoy debates when you can go deeper on a topic and bring especially when you can bring scientific research through to it. Um, scientific research to something that, when you're talking about feelings, uh, can sometimes be, be brushed off as a little bit hippie, or um, just being too soft-skinned and too feeling, and, um, and that's not useful, so... Uh, <laughs> so when I come across scientific research that um, that gives depth to our understanding of our emotional selves and and how we process emotions, I I get excited to share it, um, even if it's not new research. If if it's something that gives a little bit more depth to what I'm about, which is. Uh, I'm, I'm definitely a balance between emotional and logical, but, um, but I really feel like we can't have one without the other. So when I come across research that, um, that supports that or gives depth to that or gives a new understanding for me or for others to that, um, I love it. So I did share this in a post a few weeks ago, but I feel like it's worth memorializing in a video and talking a little bit more about it uh, because I feel like it should be something that is more of a common understanding about our brains than just how our brains are designed to just think, right? So I've written it down because it's quite long and I want to make sure that I get it right and I'm not great at um, verbatim quoting and it's something in me that really wants to get everything verbatim when I am trying to get something across. So I'm working on it. Um, so this is out of uh, Bessel van der Kolk's book, The Body Keeps the Score. Um, you can see there it's just in my coffee table there. If I had it in front of me, I'd hold it up and show you. Um, but so he shares, he, um, he is a researcher and, um, a doctor in, he, he's done a lot of research in, uh, the field of PTSD and how our bodies hold trauma and, um, and is actually one of the pioneers of um, the, the, t the term PTSD and how we actually identify PTSD. It's no longer just shell shock um, and it's no longer relegated to just military and those who have experienced um, wartime, even though it is still very much pre uh, very prevalent in that as well. Um, but just to give you context, that's that guy. He's kind of a big deal in this world. So his quote, or he talks about how neuro neuroscientists have shown that the only way we can ac consciously access the emotional brain, so there is an emotional brain in there, is through self-awareness by activating the medial prefrontal cortex, 
And that is the part that notices what is going on inside us and then allows us to feel what we are feeling. So um, there is a term for this, it's called interoception. Um, and it is just the awareness of what are we feeling on the inside? What are our feelings? What are our emotions? Rather than proprioception, which is where we are in space and the external interoception brings it into ourselves. Uh, so neuroscience research shows the only way we can change what we feel is by becoming aware of our inner experience and learning to befriend what is going on inside ourselves. So basically, you can't think your way out of feeling. That's my interpretation of it. You can't sit there and think your way out of a bad mood. You can definitely motiv motivate yourself in other ways by thinking certain things, absolutely. But you, if you only connect with the aspect of you that is thinking and deny, reject, or just pretend it's not there, the aspect of you that is feeling, that isn't going to work for you. Um, It, that's really what it is. That's really what it comes down to is we absolutely need to allow ourselves to feel what it is we are feeling and we will do better for ourselves um, if we are able, I'm going to change the word befriend because sometimes that can feel really um, impossible. You know, it might be a feeling that we just hate we don't want to feel this way. We don't want to feel this shitty, whatever it is, right? Um, if we are able to at, at least acknowledge that that feeling is a part of our experience and that it is an aspect of ourselves feeling that way, um, it will change how we are able to show up in our lives and how we are able to um, interact with ourselves but also interact with others in our lives and how we are able to let go of some of the I'm going to change the word let go how we are able to um, process these things so that there are feelings that are no longer getting in our way but we cannot push them aside by thinking about them we cannot go, well, this is this feeling that's right in front of me. Well, I don't want it to be there, so it needs to go over here. And we can't move it by just willing it so without actually sitting there and sitting with it. Um, befriending it, so maybe sitting with it as if we would with a friend who is feeling that same feeling. And I, you know, there is a high chance that if your friend was feeling this feeling that you're hating on and that you're rejecting, if, if you had a good friend who was feeling that, you wouldn't feel that same hatred and rejection of them feeling that feeling. Most of the time when our friends are feeling something, we feel empathy or we feel care and we feel happy to listen. Most of the time, like generally that's our response, right? We'll give them a hug if you're a huggy person, whatever it is. But if we feel that same feeling, why is it that we can so easily then step into rejection mode? Into, no, this isn't right and I shouldn't be feeling this mode. So um, f for all the people that rely on the intellectual and it's not a bad thing I absolutely understand but for those who do rely on the intellectual um, to get their way through know that this is science based so usually and I can think of friends and people that I know who would say that it needs to be science based for them to take it seriously that's perfect it should be but um, this the feelings thing the um the warm fuzzies and the everything like that there is science behind it and it says 
the only way we can change what we feel is by becoming aware of our inner experience. And to become aware of it, we can't sit there and reject it or pretend it's not there or pretend that because it's not a part of our thinking brain that um, it's not important because it is still a part of our brain. And if, you know, logic to me says that if you are arguing for logic, then that is arguing for the brain and this is how your brain functions. So hopefully that helps you to, um, to allow a, a deeper, richer experience of your whole self and your whole brain rather than a denial of yourself or a denial of your brain that is probably working pretty well, um, but you just got to allow it to.